Hello boys and girls, my name's Tom, and today on the show we'll be talking about the Civil War trailer, new Tom Hanks movie Bridge of Spies, board game adaptations of existing properties, and a new shared cinematic universe on the way. Because we don't have enough of those already. Give it enough time and we'll end up in a team-up movie. I don't know, with Yolk's cast. Uh, this is Safe House. This week's entertainment news has been particularly sequel heavy, with behind the scenes photos from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, news that Men in Black 4 will be getting a female lead, Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant is going to get two sequels to make a trilogy, and 20th Century Fox have cancelled Fantastic Four's sequel to the surprise of no one. While these properties have opted to churn out sequels in order to continue on from their source material, an increasingly popular method is to deviate into other forms of media. So here to talk about franchises making the leap to the world of board games is my good friend and co-host James Pickard. Adaptations are already an integral part of many forms of entertainment, and as much as we like to bemoan the shit video game movies like Silent Hill and Prince of Persia and Max Payne and Resident Evil and Resident Evil Afterlife and Resident Evil Apocalypse and Resident Evil Extinction and Resident Evil Retribution. Anyway, one area where adaptations are finding near universal success is the cardboard realm of board games. With even a passing interest in the hobby, you'll probably already be well aware of how Fantasy Flight have plundered the entire HP Lovecraft work for enough mind-bending and soul-destroying board games that it could take a few years off your life. But there are a host of other film, TV, graphic novel and video game universes that have been adapted to play on your tabletop. The unbearable levels of tension and suspicion found in the Battlestar Galactica TV series are perfectly recreated in the board game, where every single one of your actions, even minor, is questioned by all the players around the table as they try to work out if you're the Cylon working against them. Being one of the most popular fantasy series of the moment, Game of Thrones has obviously seen its fair share of card and board games with enough opportunity for you to portray your friends at a moment's notice. The Witcher adventure game first launched on PC to give the developers a chance to test and refine mechanics before the launch of the tabletop version. Unfortunately, the mechanic where you wandered around with a gravelly voice bonking everything in sight was cut. And probably one of the most anticipated games of this year was XCOM, a cooperative game that has you teaming up with three other players to try and stop an alien invasion. There's about half a dozen ways to lose and only one way to win. So you spend most of the time trying to put out fires in one place while it all goes horribly wrong in another area. The XCOM game shipped with an app for your phone or tablet which was required to play as it controlled where aliens attacked from or how much funding you would get in each round and added a surprising amount of variety and uniqueness to each playthrough. And recently there was the announcement of a board game adaptation of indie hit This War of Mine. That too will launch with an app which will supposedly eliminate the need for you to read the rules before you play making the situations you experience in a war-torn environment all the more unexpected and surprising. Keep an eye out for that next year. Well, here I was ready to watch the first trailer for Captain America Civil War debut at the uh, opening of Star Wars Episode 7, but Jimmy Kimmel's jumped the gun and dropped it into his late night show last week. In it we see Cap come to blows with Iron Man over protecting his dear old pal Bucky Barnes, also known as the Winter Soldier also known as the least interesting part of the second Captain America film. With the Marvel Universe seemingly split down the middle, it's up to Earth's mightiest heroes to pick a side, and unfortunately, by law of averages, someone's going to have to be on a team with Hawkeye. With Thor and Hulk out of the picture, we're left with some of the less OP heroes to fight it out, including the Falcon, Ant-Man, Scarlet Witch and Peggy Carter's granddaughter helping old Steve Rogers protect his pre-war pal, and the likes of War Machine, Vision, Black Panther and Black Widow siding with Iron Man to hunt the rebels down. Also, Spider-Man will be there. But to be honest with you, my main concern here is Scarlet Witch, because while Tony's side have got two suits of power armour, a genetically enhanced African prince, a cosmically powered robot and the world's greatest assassin, Scarlet Witch has the power to alter the very fabric of reality. Your armour won't mean shit if she decides to turn you into a grapefruit on a whim as she is wont to do. I mean, she can make it so you literally never existed and then bounce on out with nary a farewell nor tip of the hat. If this film lasts longer than five minutes without her turning everyone into liquid, I'm calling shenanigans. But, the obvious glaring plot flaws in Scarlet Witch's power aside, it looks like it's going to be an entertaining outing, and definitely a nice setup for the Marvel films going forward. 
Steve and Tony's bromance will be shattered by the events of Civil War, but they'll have to make amends and join forces once again to take on Thanos when Infinity War rolls around. My thing of the week this week is Steven Spielberg's latest film, Bridge of Spies, which stars Tom Hanks as James B. Donovan, an insurance lawyer who is hired by the CIA to negotiate a prisoner exchange between the US and the USSR at the height of the Cold War. Tom Hanks is unsurprisingly brilliant as Donovan, a noble everyman who goes a bit Atticus Finch when he's asked to defend a supposed spy. Due to the era in which the film is set, some of the atrocities that Donovan witnesses while he's over in Berlin give the film quite a dark tone, but considering this is a Spielberg film and has a slight whiff of Oscar bait about it, the returns to inspiring American heroism sometimes can be a bit jarring. Nevertheless, Bridge of Spies is a difficult film to criticise. The tension ramps up steadily throughout the film as Donovan's negotiations complicate and almost fall apart. It's an entertaining watch and definitely recommend checking it out if you can get it in the cinema soon. Shared cinematic universes seem to be the trend at the moment. Marvel pioneered the concept with 2008's Iron Man and now DC have joined the party with their Justice League universe that kicked off with 2013's Man of Steel. But now we've got a new contender and in a rare case of films not being based on comic books, it's the Universal Movie Monsters. The likes of Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, The Invisible Man, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, all horror movie legends brought to screen by Universal Studios between the 1930s and 1950s. But the one that's going to kickstart this new cinematic universe is The Mummy. Now we last saw The Mummy in that shit one with Jet Li in it that didn't really feature a mummy, but it looks like the shared universe will be taking more inspiration from the old originals, although with a modern retelling. And of course, a modern take on the monster means a modern hero to defeat it. Someone young and dashing, intelligent but roguishly reckless, tall, dark and... Oh, okay, don't worry, they've cast Tom Cruise. Yes, Elron Hubbard's favourite PR guy will be travelling to Egypt to uncover the mystery around the curse of the mummy in a story that's going to be directed by Alex Kurtzman, who's famous for writing everything J.J. Abrams has ever created. Which is good, that's hopeful. It's slated for release in March 2017 with an as yet untitled monster movie to follow on a year later. And with the shared universe model, we're probably going to be seeing a team up movie sometime around 2020. Which, let's be honest, probably won't be very good. Maybe in 2025 we'll get Universal Monsters Civil War. We'll see Dracula team up with the Invisible Man to hunt down a rogue Frankenstein who's protecting the mummy. And also Spider-Man will be there. That's about all the time we have for this week, but if you're not bored of us just yet, we are actually going to be on the radio tomorrow uh, doing a quiz. Yeah. We're doing a quiz. We're in the final of the quiz. Mm. Uh, so if you want to tune in to Phoenix FM at 8 o'clock on Thursday the 3rd of December, uh, you can listen to us hopefully win a big mystery prize. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I hope it's really good. Giant bag of buttons. Oh my god. The runners up got a bag of buttons so I was a little bit upset yeah. but if it's a big bag of buttons I'll be happy. If you did enjoy the show please feel free to give us a like, a follow, a subscribe, a Pinterest, a heart <laughs> on Twitter, whatever Pinterest. it is now. Pin us on Pinterest. <laughs> it's not a favourite anymore it's a, it's a like. Uh, if yes that's like what you can like on Twitter. Like I like us on Twitter. I like that because <laughs> it's like I sometimes there are tweets that you go I like this I wouldn't say it's my favourite no. tweet <laughs> but I do like it yeah. so it's fair. Mm. Um, but yeah we're not going to be here next week so you know don't be here next week but um, we'll probably be back for one more before Christmas Christmas special so looking forward to it so uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time bye bye